Well, joining us in studio to discuss the legacy and the impact of uh, his untimely demise are specialized family physician, Dr. Fundi Lenyati, who is also the CEO of Proactive Health Solutions. We're also joined by clinical psychologist and president of the Pan-African Psychology Union, Dr. Sats Cooper. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Good evening. Dr. Sats, let me just start with you first of all. If you could just talk us through what the signs are of depression. Well, I think it's appropriate to, for both of us, uh, Fundil and myself, to send uh, our deepest condolences to somebody who played such a critical role in uh, not only medicine, but in the other fields that he played a role in. And his is a loss that uh, all of us uh, can uh, empathize with and it will take very big feet to fill all those shoes. Uh, I think the important thing about depression is that it is probably the most rising condition that we confront and it's been rising for the last few decades. The World Health Organization has flagged it as uh, a rising uh, uh, illness but we tend to always look at these only in the physical symptoms. So when it impacts on your mood, mm -hmm. your thought, and as a result, your other performances in whatever space, we don't take serious note of that. We usually look at maybe cardiology, maybe cancer, and the other physical things that impact on us, but we ignore depression. Uh, earlier in your new newscast, you you talked of the unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. and can you imagine at least two thirds of youth out there are unemployed, facing this despair, this dejection, this desolation, and they're prey to depression. So you can use all the adjectives with D in it to connote depression, which impacts on your physical well-being, as well as your mental your thought processes, your behavior, and as a result, impacts in so many other spheres of life. The person usually, for a clinical uh, diagnosis to be made, it needs to be a consistent pattern of certain symptoms over at least a two-week period. And sometimes it just rises on you, and all of a sudden, one is in that space and does not recognize it. And particularly for hardworking professionals who are on the go all the time, when you wake up in the morning and feel, well, should I be up today? You're not bouncing out of bed. Uh, besides the cold that you confront in winter, uh, that's a warning sign, together with other kinds of symptoms which need to cluster together. For instance, if you eat too much, if you eat too little, if you sleep too much, if you sleep too little, and that sense of foreboding, of gloom, despondency, and an overwhelming feeling of lack of self-worth, the emptiness that one feels, while around they may be, you know, in the newsroom, in whatever space one's in, in, in the homes now, you, you're alone feeling that weight, but you're unable to share it. And that's the tragedy in the 21st century, that we don't feel free to say, you know what, I'm feeling really down and it's weighing down on me. And I think I need some help or I need some space to work through this because help is available all around us. Help is available. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Nyati, you also are the CEO of um, Proactive Health Solutions. How does that deal with mental awareness, mental health, uh, and people actually being open, as Dr. Cooper's mentioned, to speaking about the fact that you are feeling depressed yeah. and not, you know, being scared of being judged for a whole health professional? How could you be yeah. depressed, you know? Well, um, condolences uh, to the Mayosi family. It's a family that uh, I know very, very well since uh, 1981. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bongani was with him, you know, at uh, St. John's College. He was my senior by a year. Um, and then at medical school, he was still a senior by a year. And uh, when he branched out to do a specialization on anatomy, we then became classmates from third year up until final year. So I've known him very, very closely. Um, my company, uh, Proactive Health Solutions, we are actually a company that focuses on helping large employers to set up employee health and wellness programs 
that is looking after the health, uh, mental, physical, social health of the employees within those organizations. Now, one of the areas that we focus on uh, is what is referred to as employee assistance programs. Those are programs that employers uh, make available to employees uh, who are troubled emotionally or socially to an extent that they are not so productive in the workplace. Uh, frequent absenteeism or poor performance as a result that they are bothered by something. So that is the work that we do. And what uh, you know, uh, we are seeing in South Africa uh, and some of the recent stats are showing that one in four employees in the South African you know, uh, workplace, uh, workplaces are actually suffering from mental illness, specifically, you know, uh, uh, you know things like uh, uh, depression, and anxiety disorders, bipolar mood disorders. But the tragedy is that of those, you know, employees, 25% in a workplace, only a quarter of them actually um, seek help um, or disclose for fear of, um, you know, uh, losing their jobs or not being considered for career progression mm -hmm. uh, or being, uh, um, you know, discriminated against either by management or the colleagues, you know. So that's the kind of work that we are, you know, busy with. It's, it's a bit difficult because uh, people have got a lot of myths and misunderstandings about what depression is. They don't think there is a difference between somebody who is psychotic, who, oh, you know, I'll call it mad, you know, um, and somebody who's actually got an abnormal mood situation mm -hmm. of which, uh, you know, depression is just exaggerated sadness, you know, um, and, 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 and uh, you know, feelings of not enjoying that which they used to enjoy before. So that's the work that we are involved in. And uh, obviously, uh, as we are hearing more about uh, Professor Mayosi, uh, they obviously were stresses that were emanating from the workplace you know, uh, which seem to have gotten worse, you know, after the student protest, uh, you know, in 2016 to date, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And unfortunately, you know, uh, as much as one can go out and get to be counseled and be put on treatment, but if the underlying, uh, you know, stressors, the ongoing stressors are not being solved, uh, it may actually make the person to relapse, you know, uh, or for them not to recover in spite of them getting appropriate treatment. And obviously we're still waiting to hear more what could have caused this, but yes. there definitely is something that is pointing towards a high levels of stress uh, in the workplace. And this is someone with a very, very brilliant mind, you know, who came up with some, some very groundbreaking uh, theories in the medical field. Yes. Um, Dr. Cooper, do you think that perhaps the student protests that were mentioned um, earlier on and some of the things that were said about uh, the professor might have been what pushed him over the edge? Well, look, I think the sense of feeling hopeless in that situation because uh, our students do, did and still do have a serious cause uh, which has gotten lost over the last few years. And he would have been in the thick of dealing with it and it probably reminded him of the struggles yes. he underwent at, uh, at Natal, Natal as well. Yeah. Uh, he was once a student as you know, well. Being a student. So he would have empathized with that. But look, there are different causes of why one gets depressed. We need to recognize that at a certain level, the chemical serotonin is lowered in your body. Yes. Right? You can have it because there's a family history of it. You can have it because of bad genes that you've inherited and, it, and result in that. You can get it because of a physical illness and that physical illness triggers you into this kind of situation. You can have it because of uh, other drugs you're taking. You can have it because of substance abuse, all of these factors. But amongst the biggest causes are the following. The death, the loss of a close one. Yes. You know, if, if you, like my age, and you've been close to somebody for many, many uh, decades, and that person passes on, and we were like twins, inseparable. The likelihood that I will pine and, and my own demise will er er erupt is very high. Secondly, uh, it's stress, huge stress, and financial problems. Yes. Now, tell me in this country, besides those few people that the city press has identified as the mega wealthy, 
How many of us out there are not worried about financial troubles? How many of us are not worried about stresses that impact in our lives all the time? When you sit in traffic, when you're in your work uh, situation, and there's a veneer of other factors that we have very little control over. The kind of things we see on newscasts and mm -hmm. we witness ourselves, the huge violence, also being a product of a violent environment can result in depression. Sexual, physical and other abuse can result in that. Now, the majority of South Africans have had some of these backgrounds to them, besides maybe inheriting it. And can you imagine the huge stress that all of us carry around and we think it will just go away. Well, I'm feeling down today, yes. But if you're feeling down for at least a fortnight. And you can't go to work. And you, you can't go to work. Or it impacts on your recreation. It impacts on your uh, focusing uh, on school. You become a bit withdrawn. Somewhat. Withdrawn, isolated. All those kinds of things are going to impact on you. And therefore, one, we, sh we should engage in this culture. You know, we now have social media. Yes. We talk about our feelings. We should actually talk about, besides the racism and other anti-feelings, we should talk yeah. about these feelings that are impacting on our well-being mm -hmm. and express that sadness to friends who may reach out to you and help you. But also, there's help out there. There's helplines. There's associations that provide services. There are community places that one can go to. There are sports clubs. There are so many institutions out there that are underutilized in this process. But if the trainer of the sports team is herself depressed, you can imagine the impact it's going to have on the youngsters. The the exactly. Right? Yeah. So we, I'm saying, are confronted by not only uh, the kinds of socioeconomic issues we're mm -hmm. confronted by, but we're confronted by a legacy on which it's easy to get depressed. So the best amongst us will feel at some time blue. But if that blueness persists, and then you start thinking hopeless thoughts, you start thinking, how do I get out of this? You know, I'm owing so many million to the bank. The bank has been sending me reminders. Maybe I should do something and disappear, mm -hmm. uh, do away with myself. And the other thing is any suicidal ideation, any thought of death, death of others, being caught up in it must be dealt with immediately. In the work that uh, Dr. Nyati's group does, whenever those things come up, they deal with them straight away. They don't yeah. refer them out. Immediately deal with them and then do a specialized referral. Mm. So we in our work environments, in schools, in places of worship, in recreation spaces, when we see that withdrawal, when we see that behavior of not wanting to engage yes. or contrarily over-engaging. Over engaging as well yeah. as another one. You know, being very restless contrary to the isolationism, the withdrawal. That's all part of uh, the mm -hmm. depression syndrome. So, But Doc, what, what, you mentioned some of the chemical uh, uh, sort of factors, mm -hmm. chemical imbalance and serotonin. Are there screening processes? If someone oh, yes. feels, you know, I think I might be on the verge of depression, yes. can you go to a doctor and say, please yeah. check me for a, depression? A, a medical practitioner can easily do that, get a professional mm -hmm. uh, lab to, to do that. And there are markers for it, yes. you know. And uh, practitioners, medical practitioners are trained to do this. But you know, one of the things that we as uh, health practitioners, often we don't look at ourselves. We don't look in. I was actually going to ask that question because yes. you have, as health practitioners, been accused of not taking care of your own bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, let, let me try and, and look um, again. You know, uh, as these health practitioners who are there to save lives, mm -hmm. who are there to make sure that we care for everybody. There's always this saying that who cares for the carers? Exactly. You know, um, in South Africa, and in fact, indeed, the rest of the world, we are seeing a lot of suicide amongst the people from the healthcare profession. This year already, Bongani is the second, you know, doctor that I know uh, who has committed suicide. All right. The other mm -hmm. one committed suicide around Easter. You know, he works in the UK, but he came back to South Africa uh, and he killed himself and the child. 
in a hotel room. So the level of um, you know, uh, depression and suicide within you know, the healthcare professionals. Uh, and, and again, uh, there is this competition amongst ourselves you know, I find it difficult to go to Seth's and actually open up, knowing that Seth is actually skilled in helping me to talk and open up about my issues and guide me because mm -hmm. they've got specialized skill, you know, to help me to cope. However, that step of recognizing that I have a problem and not be in denial, and then I need to seek help, and I worry that what if that information leaks, you know, uh, because then it's about the stigma and And you also know there. that you've got a confidentiality clause. It's very there, strange. There is it comes definitely. from practitioners. Definitely. But remember, sometimes there's an element of irrationality. Mm -hmm. You know, he talked about the fact that one of the things about depression is that your thought processes at times are not at the optimal level. Mm -hmm. And so even though you know that uh, she's, you know, he has signed, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, an oath, an oath, you know, I've signed an oath, but still, you know, uh, you find that I am not, I'm not so keen. And sometimes the family members, they recognize that there's a problem, but uh, they usually don't know how to get this doctor to go and seek help because he's supposed to be this person who's always, you know, in charge, you know, everything is going well. So we actually have a major, major problem in South Africa. And, uh, you know, the economic climate out there is not good. So a lot of other doctors are actually now uh, depressed due to finances that are going south. It's costing and more and yes, more to and, stay and, afloat. And, and, and the expectations from society, those people who, you know, who, who, who expect that, you know, the biggest house, the biggest car, the mm -hmm. biggest this, you so know. Peer pressure as well as a factor. The, the pressure. Yes. So we are experiencing a serious problem. And in fact, um, although the work that we do has been focused on workplaces, from November onwards, we'll now be going to offer direct to consumer type of services because people who don't necessarily work for companies that have got these programs, you know, at times they need to have access to these services, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you know, so um, it's a big problem. Uh, it's a challenge to all of us uh, to do something, but the stigma is one big problem that needs to be and, broken. And I think success has a price. Yes. Mm -hmm. That price is exactly what Dr. Nyati is mentioning. Uh, the denial, the lack of recognition, the lack of actually having insight into what's happening. And for health practitioners, and remember, he was a dean yes. of... Uh, Number one medical school in Africa. In the, on the continent. And if the colleagues didn't pick it up and mm. didn't act, and others close to him didn't do it, because there may be the feeling, well, I'm misdiagnosing, how will he take it? I think we have a responsibility. If we see anything un 